I'm a true degree. You might know me from things like The Mutiny, Western Illinois Correctional, and Starmancer. Welcome to the True Degree Podcast. Today is the 21st of September, uh, yeah, 2021. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, things are, uh, things are a little glum lately. First off, I like, okay, we'll, we'll go down this, uh, you know, rabbit hole, rabbit hole of, uh, of bad feelings together before we kind of like, I'll try to bring you back before we get into it. Uh, but first of all, um, I gotta say, I, if you listen to the last episode, I was all excited about this new Andrew W.K. album. Uh, because I was like, you know, like September 11th happened, and I was, or the 20th anniversary of it. And, uh, you know, regardless of how, how you feel about, like, what uh, what we should have done as a country, or, like, how you feel about America, um, I don't know. The whole situation now is pretty fucking bleak. So, uh, you know, that was a shitty time. And I was like, oh, yeah, this new Andrew WK album is going to be something people need, because uh, he's always, like, telling you to, like, you know, party and have a good time and like <laughs> I don't know if you if you listen to that new album, it's uh, it's not so party. Uh, I mean, you know, he talks about partying and his stuff on it, um, but it's pretty dark. Uh, it definitely sounds real personal. Uh, he's obviously been going through some stuff on his own. Uh, it's still a good album, but uh, you know, it's like uh, you know, it's not a, a typical Andrew W.K. album, which I think is good because, you know, you like uh, you want your favorite like artists and stuff to like do different things, not just release the same crap every time. Unless it's ACDC, they can keep coming with this, out with the same album forever, except maybe not because they're starting to die. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, speaking of death, uh, yeah, that's that's been a a rough one lately. Uh, I started with uh, Norm Macdonald, and I don't normally like to talk about celebrity deaths because you know, like I didn't know Norm Macdonald, uh, but uh, he he was definitely one of my favorites. Uh, and it's it's a weird thing too because he died of cancer, and I may or may not know somebody close to survived cancer, uh, like multiple people, and you know, obviously. I, you live long enough, you're going to know some people who died from cancer. So, uh, you know, it's a bummer because I, he was a real uh, funny guy. He kind of had his own style and everything. Uh, so I felt bad about that. Um, and then on an actual personal note, I want to say, uh, you know, Dan Sapp, uh, R.I.P. Uh, he was a good dude that a lot of people cared about in the punk community. Uh, yeah, I, I, I met him a little bit, you know, uh, didn't get to know him too well, but, uh, he was definitely part of the Fest family, and, uh, he recently, uh, I think, you know, he was the kind of guy who, who went through some shit, and, uh, you know, got through it, and then, uh, I don't know, he, it seemed like he was doing pretty well, but, uh, he, he got sick and died, I don't even understand, like, what the sickness was, the, you know, I've, I've been seeing stuff on Facebook and stuff, but, uh, uh, you know, I guess uh, condolences to, to to his family and close friends. Uh, he's definitely, I think, a lot of people in the punk rock scene and especially the Fest family are really feeling uh, his lo that loss. So uh, anyway, uh, that all being said, I did have a nice conversation with our good buddy Adam Fletcher of the Copyrights. Uh, and that's what this episode is actually about. And uh, it's gonna, we're gonna bring it back around to uh, feeling good because, uh, you know, uh, I guess speaking of fest, uh, copyrights are good, you know, they play fest somewhat often, I think. And uh, yeah, we, uh, we've toured with them and it was, it was a good time. And uh, they just, uh, they, the album's not out yet, but they're releasing a couple singles so far. From a new album. I'm not sure when it drops, but I'm sure we talk about it in the interview. Um, so anyway, before we get into it, I got to give a shout out to the uh, producers of the podcast. Luke Ellis, Ren Sons, Heather Royston, Gem City Sabrina, Sarah Koenig, Audacity Crash Clothing, Chelsea McNally, Cardboard Box Colony, and Carlos Hernandez. And if you guys can uh, let me know, I, I sent out the stickers of the month. Um, and I know at least one of you got him. I know Luke got his because he was posting about it on the social medias. All right. And uh, 
yeah, you know, I don't know how long it's going to take because, you know, I'm over here in Europe and you guys are mostly in the States. So uh, let me know how, uh, when you get them and then I'll have a good idea of like, you know, how long it takes to show up and whatnot. Um, trying to get this all figured out. You know, we, I'm, people might say like, oh, you know, Intruder Green's an old guy and he ain't punk no more or something. But I'm fucking DIYing the shit out of this uh, <laughs> and to the point where I'm like, I don't even know. I'm not going to try to research it or do too much math. I'm just going to fucking, uh, you know, send that shit out and see what happens and get real feedback from you guys. So, uh, you know, if anybody's listening, you want to like become part of the sticker of the month club, it's trying, it's a thing I'm trying to start to do with the, with the Patreon. Cause I'm, 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 you know, I'm always trying to figure out more ways to like, you know, give people stuff that, uh, for helping me out to make the podcast basically. Cause the Patreon funds the podcast, but if I can also do a few little things to like, you know, make it more worth your while, then I'm going to try to do that. Cause I think it's cool. And plus, you know, like, uh, I don't know, stickers are just cool and they're fun and I get to mess around with some more things. Um, so yeah, speaking of that, uh, what was I going to say? I was going to talk about, uh, yeah, the, uh, if you want to get on the Patreon, you can go to intrudergreen.com. We also got the merch store up there for people living in Europe or around Europe. I don't know. If you're in the States, you can buy stuff in the merch store too, but shipping might be a little shitty. So, uh, just keep that in mind, but there's some, you know, there's some cool stuff on there. There's some random stuff on there. You should probably just go check it out and see what it's like. Oh yeah. And, uh, oh yeah, that's what I was thinking about. Speaking of social medias, uh, I, I just started doing a TikTok thing. So if you're on the TikTok, like all the kids are, I don't know, go find me on there. I got like two videos up there. One that I I put out like a long time ago and I forgot I even did it. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I'm going to try to do that a little more often because, you know, it's fun to do weird shit. And uh, I got some ideas for uh, some more videos. Maybe there'll be like a TikTok thing. I don't know because I always like YouTube. It seems like it's cool when you can just have your own like TV channel, which is basically what like YouTube is. But then again, I don't know. People are all about the social medias. And if you're on TikTok, you could like do all sorts of weird thing. But like, uh, you know, chances are the way I'll do it is like if you fucking uh, you're on TikTok, you can see my TikTok videos. But eventually I'll probably put them up on YouTube, too. If that shit works out. I don't even know. Because you record some on TikTok and then they're like, oh, you want to upload this to Instagram? I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. Whatever's easy. And I don't have to try too hard. I'm going to do that. Uh, but YouTube, I like too. So uh, I'm going to see if I can get them up on all of those. But uh, yeah. Anyway, TikTok. Whatever. Um, anyway, yeah. Like, uh, I had a good conversation with Adam Fletcher. Uh, copyrights, new album coming out soon, and without further ado, on with the show. Hello, this is a prepaid collect call from Intruder Green, an inmate at the Neural Correctional Institution. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. To accept charges, press 1. Well, it's anyway, it's uh, fucking rad to see you, dude. It's been a while. I know it has been a while. I was thinking about it today. I think the last time we saw each other was uh, in the Netherlands. Oh, yeah, Jesus, yeah, that must have been uh, together. Yeah, that must have been because three years ago you were doing Kepi, wasn't that with Kepi? Yeah, so that must have been like right after that came out. Yeah, that was probably that was our Euro tour we were on, and that would have been like, I mean, obviously, because it was in Europe, but uh. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah and then we did a u.s tour after that and that's pretty much been it you know yeah like almost two years now yeah yeah i know i know the feeling and yeah, yeah. you're you're over there so oh yeah it's nice over yeah. here 
<laughs> is it? I bet. I mean, I it's bet. pretty nice, you know. Um, I definitely can't complain. Um, yeah. lots of crazy shit going on in the states these days. So, uh, not to yeah, get well, all into the fucking, uh, you know, drama of the world. That's not what we're here yeah. for. No, that's not what we're here for. We're not going to yeah. solve those problems today. That's right. That's right. That's what people <laughs> got to remember. It's not that we don't care. It's just that, you know, like, what are you going to do? Just fucking, uh, yeah, I don't know. People, <laughs> that ain't my job. A lot more. Yeah. People getting paid a lot more money than me to do that. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, but yeah, it's good to see you and good to hear your voice. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. I'm sure everybody thinks so. And, uh, yeah, I was just thinking, you know, like I was uh, catching up, listening to some of your tunes. And unlike yeah. certain other interviewers, I actually really do like your band. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, yeah, I heard that interview. I thought it was great. But uh, um, yeah, so uh, I was just rocking out to you guys on Spotify because like, yeah, as you were noticing earlier, my fancy little setup here, I got to like loop through a computer. So I could like yeah. listen to Spotify and stuff while we're doing it. And I was like, maybe I'll just like have tunes playing in the background. Cool. Is this like the storage doing... shed where you steal all your stuff and that you this... also sleep in? <laughs> you got it. You, you know, you know, the I know lifestyle. that place. Yeah, I... That's right. Yeah. 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 You know, we got the plastic uh, wraps back there. Yeah. And some extra and doors things. and tables yeah, and know, things. Yeah. yeah. In case the Gotta cops come, you can put up an extra door, right? That's right. You know, make it yeah. harder for them to get in. You that's know, right. they could break down one door. They get through. So Here's another go, oh, one. Shit, there's another one. <laughs> we got to break it down. And we lost the battering ram. Uh, yeah, you know, this is everything. We got the merch store, the hideout, and uh, all yeah. sorts of crap. The studio, obviously. You I think I see a swing. I think I see a swing in Utter's seven inch, maybe. Oh, yeah, that's very likely. We got swinging others on the merch I, store. I think I see that. I recognize that large S at the oh, end, yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's, that's right Am I right? Am I that's right? Is right. that another? All right. Absolutely. Nailed it. Um, I'm glad you bring it up, though, because I got to I got to start pimping that more. Um, I don't know. Pimping any a PC word to use these days, but whatever. Uh, yeah. People know what I mean. I got to start talking about my merch store. I'm doing Um, for anybody listening in Europe. Uh, there's lots of cool shit on there. You can get on there from intrudergreen.com. Um, and I don't think I got any. I think I do. I have copyright stuff. Probably no, not. I don't think I do. But anyway, yeah. I got a bunch of random shit like, uh, you know, stuff that fell off the back of a truck. Yeah. I mean, when you go around way. stealing CD cases out of cars all day long, you just end up with a bunch of random shit. <laughs> it's right. That's right. Or like stuff that I don't know. I think this truck was like on its way to a fat records warehouse or something. And, <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, it just, oh, yeah. A bunch of stuff fell off the back of it. And, uh, you know, now it's here and I, I got to do something with it. So I'm trying to yeah. sell it on the Internet because I heard that's what people do these days. Yeah, that's what that's where it's at. That's right. Um, but, yeah, you could also maybe uh, start going to see some bands and buying stuff from them. Speaking of which, are you guys playing some shows soon or what up? What we do have? have. We have some shows. We started booking a few things. We have. Uh, uh, coming up just in like. 20 days we're playing the lost cross 35th anniversary show with a bunch of bands from carbondale which is gonna be really fun and then we're doing uh like a, a yachttoberfest down in paducah kentucky which is a small town about an hour away from here which we what haven't been to in years yachttoberfest like on a yacht yak yachttoberfest i guess oh, okay. y-a-c oh like uh, it's like an arts festival they have downtown All but right. then we're playing uh, stands for something we're playing the Melody Inn on October 22nd, uh, X-Ray Arcade in Milwaukee on the 23rd, and then Sleeping Village in Chicago on the 24th of October. I think the so, Melody Inn might be the first uh, place I saw you guys play. Is that in Illinois? No, it's in or, Indianapolis. Indianapolis. Okay. Nope. Totally different place. Yeah, Never mind. No. <laughs> but you guys might have made it. You probably played there at some point. It's been there forever. It's like a legendary bar. Yeah, we've only uh, played Indianapolis like a few times and i think yeah. most of those times were in a house <laughs> oh a halloween yeah, house like, or something yeah yeah i don't even remember but uh yeah that would have been the halloween house days that yeah, probably, probably. Been yeah. yeah it was good shows i remember yeah they were great yeah they had a really great house show scene there in like the mid 2000s we played there all the time and we played there quite a bit all, all yeah. sorts of venues hell yeah yeah um so but yeah I, we got some shows coming up things are starting to happen again yeah a little a little bit. 
Um, that's bit. great. Uh, well, I jumped the gun there talking about like what's currently happening because uh, yeah. what, what I like to do with these interviews is kind of like uh, go back and like, you know, it's all about talking about the history of punk rock and stuff. And like, Ooh. you know, your history specifically, um, okay. I would love to know about the band starting because you guys have been around for a while now. I think I saw uh, you guys starting like 2003 or something, or at least that's when yeah. you got out your first thing, right? Yeah. 2003 was like when our first record kind of came out and we went on tour, I guess, in 2003, something oh, like tight. that. Uh, uh, but yeah, so we're almost coming up on 20 years, which is a pretty long time. Hell yeah, it but is. It, that's like it happens real quick. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's like twice as old as my band, and I don't, I don't know if we're gonna make it to twenty at this rate. <laughs> Cheapest creepers. Um, yeah. Well, just stay away from the cops, and you guys will be fine. Yeah, uh, you know what the cops sometimes are. What brings us together, you know, like uh, everybody's out doing their own thing, and then suddenly we're all in prison. It's like, oh hey, you're here too. Let's uh, let's <laughs> start a band. Write, yeah, let's write some songs. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, I uh, yeah, I go way back with Mass Intruder. We've known you guys for a long time. I That's actually cool. remember we played a show at the Frequency. Is that the name That's of the place? The one. Yep, that was a big club in Madison where we played a lot too. Yeah, and I remember sitting at the bar with Blue. Yeah, and I was like, I can, I, I had, I preached the gospel and convinced him to like go record that first record with matt allison at atlas studios oh like, you you're the one that. who got i that was like going. matt's the guy that you need to go to matt is the guy you need to you should go to matt yeah and and he did and the rest is history yeah I, I, you know i'm i'm glad to know that i didn't know that story um but uh definitely uh had a really good time recording with matt doing our first two albums and like you know he he really challenged us to uh kind of like uh I don't know, do something, do stuff that we never would have wanted to do in the first place, yeah, like right. uh, not using auto tune and shit like that. It's like, I don't yeah. know. I guess he thought we were talented or something. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it was very monotonous and hard, but yeah. we got through it and we're, we're very proud of like what we did with him because of that. Um, have you guys done anything with Matt? Like, obviously, yeah, we recorded a couple of records. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we recorded Make Sound with Matt and we recorded North Sentinel Island with Matt. Oh, yeah, that's and, right. I knew that because uh, I think had North Sentinel Island like just come out when we did maybe. our first album. Might have been around that time. Yeah, I just remember seeing it. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. might have been around that time. And we did the split with the Methadones. We recorded that there. Oh, but yeah. when I was living in Chicago and every time we were hanging out in Chicago, like that was kind of our home base. We were there oh, a lot. Sure. I was there for a lot of sessions, all sorts yeah. of bands. Hell yeah. Yeah. It was great. Great studio. It's gone now, unfortunately. But Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't yeah, sure because I knew that he had like stepped back and like let other people run it and I didn't know what the hell the deal yeah, was. Yeah, it eventually closed the doors and uh, I think he's just doing home home stuff, mixing and stuff from home now like everybody else. Yeah. That's, that's the way it works. Yeah, it's a weird thing because, you know, like the way everything's recorded, like I I feel like I think you guys maybe do some of that these days too. Uh, where it's like, you know, one th one real great thing about Atlas is he had a really great sounding room, mm -hmm. and uh, that's real important for drums. Yep. And uh, I, as far as punk rock goes, I feel like that's about it. <laughs> like, <laughs> what else? Do yeah, you need I a mean, sounding room for you know. Yeah, that's true, and there is. Yeah, that's what we did. You know, we were always Luke. Luke went to college because he's smart oh yeah and uh, the first degree he got was audio engineering so we started recording and stuff ourselves pretty early on at the beginning of the band but what i'm getting to is like we didn't make sound on two inch tape oh hell yeah <laughs> or at least the bass and drums were on two inch tape so like he had just got a digital pro tools rig and oh, we're still yeah. doing bass and drums on two inch tape and then transferring it down and then doing the rest of it on Pro Tools. So that'll put you in a time and place of like, that's like, you know, our second record, third, third record. So we were still, <laughs> but uh, by, we were, by the time we were doing North Central Island, which is a couple records later, we tracked the whole record. We, we demoed the entire album several times over. And then we took the 
Pro Tools sessions to the studio and then just re-record it over it. Oh, wow. So, yeah, that's, that's great. And that's kind of the way that we, that was, that's kind of the way we've been doing things for a little while is like, we already have, here's the template of the record. This is what it's going to sound like, but we need the drum sound to, to sound good. And we need like, you know, a real studio. There's also something to be said about whenever the whole band goes to a recording studio and you're all there together and you're focusing on the record. Absolutely. And that's it. That's what you're there for. You're there to make a record. And that's it. You're not like chilling out at your buddy's house, having some <laughs> beers. Somebody's coming over, bothering you, or like you got to go, you know, run errands or go pick up kids or whatever distractions. Right, right. So I think that there's there's something to that too. I, like I really like that. Like everybody just getting together and making a record. And then also, when your time is up, that's your record, pretty much. Yeah. Like it's, it's the time. It's the the time constraint and the time capsule of like this is the time we did it. There it is. Sometimes, you know, you have endless amounts of everything now, right. endless amount of time, endless amount of drum sounds, endless amount of guitar tones. Yeah, it's true. With all the all that samples can, or whatnot. And uh, so much, you know, yeah. you can get like an app on your phone that can make your guitar sound like anything. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, yep. but I don't you know. Lost in it. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. I've been I've been hearing some uh, new recordings lately, and it de- definitely seems like people are. Uh, kind of getting away from that a little bit i feel like um just uh you know just maybe using some natural tones for for the guitars and stuff which i like i don't know it, it, yeah. it it's 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 a weird time because it's like everything is so fucking easy to do like you said in your it's yeah. your own place at your own whatever you want to do and then you got all this time in the world um so it's also kind of like that's good for like poor people and it turns out like not all punk rockers are rich these days. Yeah, right. Who would have thought? But, uh, you know, uh, at the it's same time. It's bad for recording studios. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, there's going to be a, there's gonna be a point where you're like, wait, where do I go record drums? Yeah. <laughs> oh, there is no studio. Yeah, you right. Know? Like, well, you oh, just, it's a- yeah, yeah, it's Abbey Road or Electrical Audio or something. Yeah. Yeah. And I know, but, uh, I know some people are like, well, you could come do it in my garage here. It sounds real good. As you could tell, that's why yeah. I do it here because I get this great uh, room noise, which is wonderful for <laughs> podcasting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You get a little reverb room, that's a little right. room sound. That's right. Room sound. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so, so anyway, g- getting back to uh, like actually talking about the history here. Yes. Um, are you originally from Carbondale yourself? Yes. Okay. So is in that you guys are all originally from there, but no something. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was born here. Uh, Luke was born here as well. Kevin yeah. probably too. So, but we all grew up. The three of us grew up in a town about seven miles away called Carterville. It's just a small town, like oh, four thousand yeah. people. Uh, and Brett is from Lincoln, Illinois, which is like I don't know four hours, five hours north of here, kind of way up there on your way to Chicago. But he came down here for school oh, yeah. in like 2001 or so, and then ended up joining our band right at the beginning. So yeah, we're all from around here. Uh, I'm the only one that still lives here. Everybody okay. else is spread around Chicago, Springfield, Nashville. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. yeah. It was kind of hard to figure that out for a while, I think, when we were touring around and stuff, because like we yeah. see you guys all over the place and it was like, right. wait a minute, what's going on? Right. But you're all a bunch of Midwest dudes. Yep. Basically. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. All right. I love it. For sure. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, obviously, uh, you know, you, you, so you get together, you start this band, um, and eventually you get on Red Scare. They didn't put out your first album. They didn't put out the first album or the second album. Oh, shit. It took a while then, huh? Yeah. Toby was actually there before mutiny pop came out and he tried to put it out on red scare but we had already started working with the insubordination guys and they had already you know we had already just kind of planned on doing it with them and for better or worse we just went with insubordination yeah but then shortly after that we ended up signing red scare doing make sound okay and you did a bunch of stuff on red scare then yeah kind of being like i don't know for us that was helpful to like pull us into like the Chicago scene. Did that kind of happen for you guys? Oh, absolutely. And also, yeah, 
Also, Toby moved to Chicago the same time I moved to Chicago around 2005, oh, all right. 2006. So then immediately we were like hanging out all the time and playing, you know, that became the home base for Red Scare and we were there too. So it was, we played, yeah, that, <laughs> that was a huge introduction for us to the Chicago scene. Yeah. It helped it, I mean, that made it like our second home really. Yeah. It's weird. It, it absolutely for us too. Um, Cause you know, we're basically, you know, based out of prison, but we like to hang out in Wisconsin a lot. So, uh, right. you know, being pretty close, that was totally a second thing for us. Um, and I think it's cool. Like, I don't know that that's still a sort of thing with that scene or like the punk rock scene, I guess, because, you know, some bands will like, they'll be trying to get into Chicago and it's for some reason, it's like, seems like difficult unless you kind of know a guy. I don't know. Guess, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess I, I've just known a guy for a long time. So. Well, yeah, so you maybe <laughs> so it seems whatever. easy, but also right. I think it's yeah. It, I mean, maybe to play like you know a proper club that holds like hundreds and hundreds of people, it's probably a little hard to get into. But I feel like Chicago has got a pretty welcoming punk scene. Yeah, I mean, if you're willing we, to like you know stick we your were, neck out and play some small. We were able to play at the mutiny a few times. Ah, there you go. Yeah. And that's kind of like everybody's welcome. Right. (laughs) Right. And yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That place was interesting. Yeah. Um, Amazing urinal. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Yeah. No idea if that place is still around. Probably not. But uh, it was that uh, urinal is just still there. They couldn't get rid of it. Just just an empty lot now with a urinal. A museum. I don't (laughs) know. The Chicago Museum. They got to put that in there. Uh huh. Yeah. But yeah, I don't I think know. It was I like feel a like... bathtub on its side. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, it, that makes sense. You could use it that way anyway. Good. Um, but yeah, I feel like a lot of bands just end up playing the the suburbs, and they're always like, I remember that bands would be like, "Oh, you want to play in Chicago with us?" And we'd be like, "Hell yeah!" And then we yeah. show up, and it's like, "Oh, it's in the burbs." Cool. It's, <laughs> it's Palatine like, or something, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Schaumburg. It's like, all right, well, you know, it'll be a fun show either way. Yeah, but it ain't exactly Chicago. Um, that's right so anyway <laughs> yeah so you, you, you i guess i don't know is is where you grew up kind of the burbs no there are no burbs okay <laughs> <laughs> i'm just i'm just trying to figure out like uh you yeah. know that was a- it was your story the classic like kid growing up in the suburbs fucking uh kicking shit around and uh you know not kind of like uh i don't know it's that kyle kane had a thing about like uh you know growing up in the suburbs is like a special kind of creeping oppression for like kids because it's like oh shit you know i'm just gonna fuck around suddenly i'm 30 and uh, i'm still here <laughs> <laughs> something oh, I like see. that yeah i, I got don't you. know i'm, well, trying, to, I'm yeah. trying to figure out uh so the, the, yeah the adam fletcher's story about how you absolutely got i'll give you i'll give it to you real quick so yeah, so the town of Carterville is really small and it's just uh it's like eight miles away from Carbondale and it's you know, it's just trees on the way there. It's not like a suburban sprawl by any means. So you know, it's just a small American town. Uh and I got into punk rock through skateboarding. So I got into skateboarding first when I was pretty young. And then through that I was, you know, hanging out with older people. They were into punk and stuff, and that rubbed off pretty quickly. So I got into punk rock through that. And then um, when I was 14, I got a bass guitar. I'd already got, I already had a guitar when I was like 11 or 12. Yeah. And I kind of knew how to play. You know, like when Nirvana came out, it was like, ah, like, you know, try to play oh, a guitar exactly. or whatever. Whenever grunge happened, yeah. it was like, oh, guitars. So I, when I, that was the perfect age for that. I was like 12, 11 or 12 years old. Yeah, so yeah, so when I was 14, I got a bass and then... Uh, Quickly ended up at school meeting Luke and he played the drums and then we're like, let's just jam. And then we're still doing it. Uh, hell <laughs> so yeah. It was 1994, 95 around there. Hell yeah. So basically yeah. this is your high school band. Yeah, it is. And it's, yeah, between me and Luke, it's still like the same band. So, you know, you put us in a band together and we're still 15 year old idiots yeah well yeah (laughs) i feel like any band that's uh i don't know i guess like worth their salt is probably like that like 
even if they Stunted. started when they were yeah exactly <laughs> like even if even if they grew up and started a band once yeah. you get in that van you're gonna regress yep. yeah oh absolutely yeah. our iq I mean, goes down to. you probably yeah. have oh you to, have to otherwise you can't make it you know yeah you have to be too dumb to quit or else you will be smart <laughs> enough to quit <laughs> that's right so that's right yeah yeah um, so but I, I think it's interesting you mentioned 1994 because you're a high school band who started in 1994 then later you you wrote that song is was the song called 1994 yeah it, i yeah. actually stole the title from ramones planet earth 1988 oh and, yeah and so, so the official title is planet earth 1994 yeah there you because i just thought that the title planet earth was so dumb that for some reason <laughs> we should have just called it 1994 but it was just one of those dumb jokes or like no, oh we should call it planet earth 1994 but yeah, 1994, and it is a reference to that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think yeah. that's great, actually, now that you tell me that, because um, mm -hmm. I totally missed it. But now that I know it, yep. I, I love it. That's and right. uh, <laughs> But so, you know, 1994, with the great lyrics, talking about Green Day stuff, which that's right. I believe were also a high school band when they started. So uh, it's pretty perfect. It's like everything comes full circle. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> Guitar players, I bet you thought you were shit out of luck when it comes to finding your dream guitar or amp. You know, you go on some auction site or something and it's all crap. <laughs> yeah, well that's because, you know, you gotta look in the right place. And the right place is Yeah Man's Vintage and Used Guitars. They got exactly what you're looking for. Now I know what you're thinking. Aren't they located in like Switzerland or something? Yeah man, they are. Burn Switzerland to be exact. But you know, you can, um... Uh, Get on the internet and you can go check out the website, yeahmansguitars.com, and uh, you can order stuff on there. So, uh, you know, it don't really matter where the heck you are in the world. You can just get on their website and uh, find all sorts of cool stuff that you're looking for. And you might not even know that you wanted it until you see it on there, and there's a lot of good stuff. Uh, if you got something specific you're looking for and need some help finding it, just hit up Yeah Man Guitars on the electronic mail. That's the email. It's like 21st century, and you got email and websites. It's like amazing. Some people would call it magic. Some people would call it science. I just call it, I don't know, crazy shit. Uh, yeahmansguitars at gmail.com. As far as email goes, it's where you email them. And while you're at it, get your band a tour in Europe and stop by the shop. Michael and the rest of the crew would love to meet you, I'm sure. And you could tell them Green sent you. Yeah, man's vintage and used guitars. Thanks for listening to the Intruder Green Podcast. By now you probably heard about our sponsor, Stupid Rad Merch Company. And if you haven't, then listen up, because I gotta tell you, Stupid Rad Merch Company is a great web store with a bunch of your favorite bands at stupidradmerch.com. And if you're in a band and need some work done, they can get you totally covered for a modest price and super quick turnaround time. But don't just take it from me. Here's what the ladies from Bad Cop, Bad Cop had to say about it. Yeah, it's you know. great ideas. It's always pushing, always moving. Simeon is delightful to work with. He's yeah. very responsive and professional. and It's the quality of the shirts. I like them. Yeah, high quality. High very, quality. Very well done. Very well done on the ink. It, it really feels is. like a family again. Yeah. It feels like it's, it's a place where you can... You can trust what's happening and don't forget to use the code prison at checkout and get a 50 percent discount on all stupid red branded apparel that's p-r-i-s-o-n i think i don't really know how to spell but those are the letters they told me to say stupidredmerch.com so you start the band you're doing red scare you're touring around um but now present day uh i think somebody needs to update your wikipedia page because i was just looking at it to find out some info and it's still, yeah. you're still on red scare but i from what i understand that's not true no more or not yeah. that you're not on red scare but they, they got well, we still have five records on red scare so we're still yeah. on red scare but yeah the new one comes out on october 22nd is on fat records oh yeah called, all right called alone in a dome and hence the uh, the press run that you're on. That's why I'm here. That's right. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you're on Fat Records. They they're gonna like push you out, put you out. They're there gonna send me to Green. Make you talk to Green exactly. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, Got to get that green bump, that green boost. <laughs> that's right. That's what it's all about. All right. Um, good. Um, okay. I like that you wore a tuxedo, by the way. That's right. This is my... Uh, I'm trying to do... Uh, yeah, more YouTube specials, and this is my like. Yeah, it looks great. Looks late night you. attire. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, see, now people will listen to the podcast, and since you said that, they're gonna be like, "Oh, I gotta check out the video version now." <laughs> <laughs> Let me subscribe on YouTube. Yeah, and like and this and click, click all the clicks. You know, smash Apparently, that like button. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what they say. Smash <laughs> yeah. that like button. Um, yeah, and uh. Yeah, I don't know. Apparently, there's a way to make like when people click the mouses where it gives me money. Uh, I don't know how that works, but I yeah. just keep doing stuff. And eventually, I think uh, it'll work. It's yeah. Like magic. Good luck with that. Yeah. Good luck with that. Yeah. You know, it's just a it's a way to stay out of prison, I guess. Trying no, that's to, true. You know, they're, they're nice over here about the cr crime stuff, but uh, I try not to abuse it too much, you know. Fair enough. Yeah, they yeah. like to follow the rules over there too. They do absolutely. They do. Yeah, um, they follow the rules. They will slow down on the highway at a construction zone. Oh yeah, big time. <laughs> and uh, if you in America, they just speed right through. Oh but, yeah, yeah. In Germany, it's yeah. like whoa, whoa, slow down, everybody. Yeah. Well, they got these. Uh, they got cameras everywhere for traffic too. Uh, That's right. And sometimes, traffic if you're camera. going too fast by one of those cameras. You'll get a note in the mail and it'll have a picture of you and they'll be like, you were going too yeah. fast. Now give us your license. And I'll yep. be like, jokes on you, buddy. I ain't got no <laughs> license. All right. That's right. I also like the uh, pay, like the, the honor system of the train or the trolley where you can just get on. Oh, yeah. You don't have to pay to get on. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how it is in every city, but uh around here they definitely it's like it's weird they just have yeah. people who get on randomly and they yeah. just start checking. checking people for tickets right. Right. And you never know when it's going to happen or what but like yeah mo most of the time you can just get on and like try your luck and yeah you know even if that's you the Ameri that's the american in me to be like oh what no one's around oh fuck that i'm just kidding oh, yeah. <laughs> it might be the american in me or just the criminal whatever you know like <laughs> well right yeah you gotta try to get away with some shit sometimes <laughs> yeah, that's right <laughs> and, and that's an easy one like plus when they do get on it's like if you're if you're like way in the back or something you can just fucking get off quick enough yeah. hopefully yeah i'm that's a dumb american i don't know i don't know how these <laughs> things work <laughs> that's right um that's right so now, well, I don't know the way the way fat likes to do things. They, they feel, I feel like they might be getting stuff planned for you guys. You guys, uh, I mean, I'm, well, this is a dumb question because you can't uh, announce anything until it's ready. But uh, I got nothing. Yeah, <laughs> we <laughs> haven't announced it. There's everything that is to be announced is announced. We don't have yeah. anything. Yeah, I don't know. That's probably true for everybody right now. Everybody's yeah, it's like just such a weird go. time. Yeah, it's just hard. Yeah, it's such a hard, weird time to to do anything. Yeah, that's true. Um, so. I do want to ask though because I know you. I heard. Um, are you doing any kind of uh, musical production stuff on your own? Ah, uh, no, not really. I mean, I just mess around with Pro Tools and stuff, but I don't have like any kind of solo band right. or anything. No, not not nothing like that. I feel like. Uh, yeah, maybe it didn't happen, but when we were recording with Matt Allison, he mentioned you for uh, possible doing a mastering of, of no, one of that would things. Be, could have been Luke, no. actually. Luke nah, does master. I feel like it was you he mentioned, but that's no. weird. All right. No, not me. Well, never I would fucking have, mind then. I would have fucked that record up. I don't know anything <laughs> about mastering. Well, then we wouldn't have been the only ones. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Um. Well, I did want to ask the question I uh, thought about before, okay. um, which is uh, crime stories. Oh, you crime stories. Any? Yeah. I, don't I know. do you have some. some time to think about it and be like, That's right. well, maybe I want to change the names and faces of this uh, episode uh, to protect the uh, criminals or no, something. I don't. Uh, probably our best crime story is the time 
collectively, I would like to say one where it doesn't get anyone else in trouble. Oh, yeah. Uh, is uh, when we all went to jail in the UK. Oh, and shit. Kicked us out of the country for a year. Well, that's a good cool one. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a good one. Yeah, we got. I mean, an you got off- busted, so it's not like you can get. <laughs> more in trouble now yeah right? that's true so you know uh dear landlord had toured done a couple of tours of europe and one time well it's not even dear landlord re- related now that i'm thinking about it it was the, the first time the copyrights went over we didn't have the paperwork to get into the uk and we were with the zatopex oh yeah and, cool and for whatever reason they were well i mean obviously they were like you can't come in so it was like, okay. So we took a couple of days off and just slept in an F1 <laughs> and it was great. Wait, and, what's an uh, F1? An F1 is the, uh, it's the German hotel that doesn't have anybody that works there. You just oh. go in and get a room and they have like a community shower. It's like 30 bucks a night and you can get like a small room and it, then they have like a community shower area. They have a couple of different Holy names, shit. but F1 is one. I thought it was in Germany, yeah. but they changed I mean, the name like, outside of countries. We probably yeah. stayed there. At, we were in, in France. In at least so one. it was an F1 in France. That's oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, while we were there, there was a entire s- couple school buses full of kids from <laughs> like, I can't remember what country they were from. Somewhere in Eastern, in Eastern Europe com- country showed up. Okay. And at night, they, were all, they all snuck out to the courtyard and our room okay. opened up to the courtyard. Oh, and- no. <laughs> yeah, and Je- Jeff, who was playing guitar for us at the time, was started talking to these kids, and they asked him to go buy alcohol. So he went to the grocery store across the street and got a big, the biggest bottle of vodka you could get, and he got it gift wrapped, <laughs> like uh. professionally gift wrapped. And then he gave it to the kids. Uh, we actually threw it up to the window, up like a story up to their room. I have it all on video, which is pretty great. Keep but in that's, mind that's an incriminating story, uh, <laughs> but. <laughs> so this was in 2006 with the Zatopex. And then okay. so we were, we were flagged. We couldn't get in. No big deal. Uh-huh. Your landlord had came back uh, maybe a year later and we didn't have paperwork to get into the UK, but we just said, Hey, you know, we're just coming across on foot and they let us in. Okay. So a couple years later, we were, uh, we got a, a, a contacted by someone who was running like Green Day's fan site. Oh, cool. And it was about the anniversary of Kerplunk. And the guy was like, I want to have like all my favorite bands come and play the show. And it's on the anniversary of Kerplunk, blah, blah, blah. And we're like, okay, well, if you fly us, it was very short notice. It was like a month away. The guy didn't have a venue. It was all kind of really fucked up. But he invited yeah. Kepi over and like a few other bands came over. So I was like, all right, well, if you buy the plane tickets, get us hotel rooms. Like we're not going to bring a guitar. So not even a pick, like we're yeah. not bringing anything. You just fly us over there. And sure enough, we end up getting plane tickets and, like, and hotels. So we're like, okay, I guess this is happening. So we get on the plane and we're leaving Chicago and the flight gets delayed because of, so oh. we're stuck for hours and hours and hours and hours. And it was like one show on a Saturday and we were flying there on like, we would have landed like Friday morning and left on Sunday. Like we were in and out. So we yeah. were delay- super delayed. We eventually get to Heathrow. And when we get there, the woman at the front desk like takes all our passports and scans them. And then is immediately like, what are you here for? Mm. And I had some, I think my excuse was like, we're here for a friend's wedding. Like there's a, a wedding sure. this weekend. And She's immediately like, are you guys playing a show or not? <laughs> and I was like, well, no. <laughs> and it was, and you know, we were flagged collectively yeah, yeah, yeah. the first time in like yeah. 2006 or whatever. So it was just, we were, it caught us off guard because we had been over there since me and Brett anyway. Oh not yeah. The four. Right. Right. So then it was like, okay, yes. But look, listen, there's no money exchanged. Like there's no, there's no, I I, like, there's no money exchange. So do I have to get, you know, a visa for this? Do I have to get paperwork? And 
So they, uh, yes, you do. So they put us in a holding cell oh. area that they put everybody. And we were there for hours and hours and hours. And then they take us in the room individually and do every scan of your body, retinas, fingers, everything. Cheapers. And then they interviewed us all and asked us a bunch of questions. And they could not really wrap their mind around the fact that like we were a band <laughs> signed to a label. <laughs> so if you're signed to a label, you're automatically like a professional band. Yeah. I'm trying to explain to her like... <laughs> We're not, I mean, yeah, I guess we're professional, but we're, we're, we're not really like, we're not the, the yeah. last person they, the, the, the day the two days before this, the person they had in the room was Belinda Carlisle. Great. You know? yeah. We're not Belinda Carlisle. So, right. <laughs> uh, and they let her go, of course. Oh yeah. Nice. Uh, but so they didn't let us go. And I had told them that, you know, we have a booking agent and we had tour dates of the UK coming up later up that later that year. So we had like, you know, it's, we're not total dummies, but, uh, they ended up putting us in a van and taking us over to jail (laughs) (laughs) for the night. Uh, so we, yeah, two to a room, me and Brett got a room and Jeff Jeff and Luke got a room. Luke ended up with two pillows and one was mine. (laughs) Uh, so I didn't get a pillow and, uh, I had the worst, the, the food was fucking horrible because not only i, I well, want to apo- yeah. apologize to everybody in the uk what, what i'm about to say right now your food <laughs> is of a certain uh flavor <laughs> yeah uh, i don't know it's not always the best sometimes i don't know food- is it really of any flavor it seems like it's like <laughs> of no flavor to me yeah that's what i'm kind of getting at it's kind of a goulash sometimes anyway yeah. and so the microwavable uh goulash that i ate was really horrible it was fish. It was fish. It was. Yeah, uh, there, so yeah, they put us in a jail cell for the night. Uh, I had to watch Brett take a dump. And then uh, the next morning, they <laughs> ended up putting us on an airplane and flying us back to Chicago and banning us from the country for a year. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. you know, a year. That's not We so didn't bad. go back. It's we didn't like- go back for a long time. And then we went back and did a proper. We did the Manchester Punk Festival and did a proper tour, and it was great. Cause yeah, you got the papers and everything. We got the papers, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that was, I think you guys probably went through some growing pains on, what is, what is, what is the right thing to say? Like, on behalf of, like, the rest of the punk community? Because I feel like maybe there was a time, like, may, back in the 80s or something, when punk bands would just do that and get away with it maybe because they couldn't track them as easily as something yeah for Um, sure but then at a certain point you know they got facebook and stuff like i've heard of that where people like be able to like check everybody out on facebook and like no look at you sent this message to this guy you're coming over here first show you motherfucker yep um but yeah i think uh because by the time we got our first europe tour uh everybody was like do all the paperwork you know, don't fuck yeah. around. Just right. You got to pay these taxes. Just do it. It's going to be great. Don't worry about it. But yeah, do it the right fucking way. Um, right. So I feel like maybe you guys kind of took a bullet for everybody else. Well, this was also one. just a weird circumstance where it was like the show is so close that we couldn't even get paperwork. Yeah, like, I guess there wasn't so, even yeah. an option to like. There was no other option to get in. It's like if we either sneak in or we don't come at all. Right. And now it would be like, I'm not sneaking in. But, you know, it's just one show and no money. It's like, ah, maybe yeah, we can yeah, yeah. I and, mean, uh, yeah. And we would have if it wasn't for that pesky cop. But uh, <laughs> we learned our lesson on that one. I mean, we, yeah, we snuck into Canada yeah. too, like the first time we were going up there. Oh, and the lesson when we were is- coming back. When we were coming back, George W. Bush was the president at this time. Oh, shit. So when we were coming back, it was they let us in the Canadian border, no problem. And then on the way back, they were like interrogated all of us for a long time. Like did not believe why we were up there just hanging out or doing whatever we said. But I just remember <laughs> we were sitting there at customs. There was a huge picture of George W. Bush's smiling fucking face on the wall, like oh, way God. oversized that we just all had to sit there and stare at <laughs> while they had us like sitting, set, you know, two, two chairs away in the room because they can't sit too close to each other or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know how that goes. And I remember our roadie at the time, they like searched his pockets and they pulled out some earplugs and they were like, 
what do you have these for? And he's like, uh, cause like whenever I go listen to music and he's like, you listen to music so loud, you have earplugs. <laughs> like, <laughs> like they're yeah, earplugs. Like, I'm cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I think the lesson to be learned really is, uh, always stick to the lie. Oh, absolutely. She said, you Always know, are you guys playing a show? You should have just said, no, we'll hear from my buddy's wedding. Like I'm sure you. that's probably what came what out of my mouth. What <laughs> <laughs> asking me questions? And then it's like, okay, if you lie to me one more time, it's like, okay, yeah, we're here to play yeah, a show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like, right. How, yeah. Because you do yeah. kind of wonder, like, how many times can I lie to them before they just say, like, look, it doesn't yeah. matter what you're saying to me. I'm still going to arrest you. Yeah, and I wouldn't want them to think I'm like there for some sort of nefarious reasons. I mean, we're really not. We just wanted to play a stupid show. Yeah, that'll yeah. happen. It will um, happen. <laughs> well, that was a, actually a really great story. I'm glad uh, glad you got to tell that, and I got to get yeah, you to yeah. tell that. Yeah. Um, fuck, <laughs> I would love to go into uh, you know, into my passport and look at the denied stamp. <laughs> Yes, actually, we should put that on the internet. And we that still have like we still have our like uh, little prison cards that they gave us, like our little picture <laughs> laminated photo card that's like from jail. That sounds like a great like uh, like a photo of that would be like a good cover for a live album or something. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I, I can't. I can't. It's foggy, but I can kind of picture it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you've had it. one. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um. Yeah, but no. Uh. You know. Uh. People call what you guys kind of do and what we kind of do Ramon's core. Um, and I think that's, uh, I don't know. People told us we're not a Ramon's core band no more because we're too, too like power poppy, I guess. But, uh, I don't know. Did you guys kind of like do that on purpose or do you think that's true about yourself? I don't think that's true about us because I think the criteria for being a Ramon's core band. Yeah is downstrokes right oh yeah you guys don't really do that huh fuck no okay. i mean i can if it's like not too exhausting but for the most part <laughs> yeah. like we don't always downstroke stuff yeah. uh no i i mean it's definitely there our first album for sure was uh -huh. like i want to start a band that's just straightforward ramonesy kind of pop punk band okay and that that record definitely is and then after we put out that album and then we went on tour we played with a bunch of shitty Ramones core bands. And then we were like, <laughs> we want to do something a little different. So <laughs> yeah, then we made yeah, mutiny yeah. pop, which was like a little different. It like, sure. yeah, it's still straightforward. One, two, three, four pop punk, but there's different stuff in there. A lot of, um, we're more into the gang vocal thing. Oh yeah. As opposed to harmonies. Uh, and you know, we have some, maybe some weird time signatures and some, some riffs here and there oh hell but, yeah uh, i love yeah since you said that like uh there's definitely some tight riffs on the new song that everybody's got the heart have you got the got record the, yet did they give you the whole album no i wish they would have because i would have oh. fucking leaked it but uh you know you would have been the first suspect that's right that. i would have yeah. i mean not my only problem with leaking albums online is i don't know how to make money from that it's you like put you on put your youtube channel smash that like oh shit <laughs> we'll see yeah. okay so send it to me and i'll figure it out sure i'll get it to you all right <laughs> no I, I, I no that's a shame I, they, well they've sent it to the other people that have interviewed me so i just had assumed that you got an advanced copy of it oh. i can i can make that happen vanessa yeah uh, well what wait, but when does it come out i forgot I know october 22nd all right so i got it yeah i don't want to wait that long so i'll figure I out know. when i can get it uh, and leak it all over the YouTube. And uh, <laughs> we recorded <laughs> make it. Make a million we, dollars. We recorded this album in 2019. Oh, yeah. So it's been sitting for almost three years at this That's point. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, man. Yeah. Pretty weird. Well, yeah, yeah. You know, like I remember you saying uh, at another time, oh, it's kind of like, it's so long ago. And I think it, everybody, every band goes through that with uh, like any album. You spend so much time recording it. And by the time you're done with it, you're like, man, fuck these songs. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. But, but yeah. you know, like you said, you haven't played them live yet and everything. Right. So yeah. uh, it's going to be cool, I'm sure. 
Yeah, yeah. We're excited to play new songs. It's just we have to figure out how to play them properly at this point. Oh, yeah. There's also <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I don't know. That was uh, everything I wanted to ask you about. Uh, okay. Yeah. And uh, what? let's see. I, I do. I'm, I'm going to want to get it on vinyl, though. So uh, that doesn't come out till January. Oh, gee. Fucking January. Creepers. Yeah, that's the way yeah. it is with that fucking vinyl shit these days. They got to press Crazy. all the uh, Christina Aguilera records first, and then they press the punk rock ones. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I, that's the way it goes these days. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. You guys should probably, uh, you know, make a record pressing plant in Chicago or something. Uh, there is one. There is one in Chicago. Yeah. Smashed plastic. Holy shit. I yeah, bet I they're know. fucking going. Uh, I think they only re- I, am, I could be wrong about this, but I think they only press l- Chicago bands. Wow. Like that's pretty dumb. I yeah, mean, I think cool, so, but I think they have a lot of work. But I'm that, not really sure. We offered to we we got a hold of them about pressing a record a while a couple of years ago. Yeah, it was a little a little bit of more than we wanted to spend at the time, but yeah, still, yeah, one yeah. exists. Yeah, Smash Plastic, look it up. I think they're still around. Huh. Well, I don't mean to insult them by saying that's dumb. I mean, it just seems like a dumb business move. But it's why do you hate them? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Hook me up. Yeah. yeah, that's right. No, I want them to sponsor my show. Actually, it's the most brilliant idea I've ever heard. <laughs> Chicago right. is the land of, uh, you know, whatever you want. I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, thanks again uh, for being on the show. It was good. yeah, again, thanks Great me. to see you, dude. Um, yeah, I hope man. you guys get the fuck over to Europe soon, and we can. Like, we will. For we reels. have some things. We have some things in April of next year. Hell we'll be yeah. over there. We'll be Hell in your yeah. neck of the woods. Nice. I'm looking forward yeah. to it. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm stoked on the new album, dude. Thanks, man. Hell yeah. yeah. I me too. We're we're super stoked. It's our first record in seven years. Wow. So, yeah. Uh, I know. So we wanted to make one that was good, and I think we did. Yeah. Well, the first, the one song that I got to hear sounds great. So uh, cool. Thank you. Extra exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah. I want to ask you. Now, nah, I do got to ask you, where did, where did you record this one? Uh, we recorded. Luke did all the drums at his house. Yeah. And then we recorded the guitars and some vocals and some stuff at Lost Cross, which is the punk house here in town, which is where we actually started our band. Oh, that's so, great. Yeah. So it's kind of a good full circle thing. Yeah. And then the other stuff I just did here at home. And yeah, Luke has a home studio. I have a home studio. So we just did it all ourselves. <laughs> so it's exactly like what we were talking about before. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> just this that's time, right. we didn't even go into a real studio. Yeah, we just right. did it all at that's, a fucking that's dirty the punk way, house. That's the way of the world these days. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Back to the roots, you know? Well, because yeah. before people were always like, oh, I'd made this super shitty recording on my four track that records yeah. to like a cassette tape. Um, yep. and it sounds shitty, but <laughs> this is what we're putting on vinyl. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Well, yeah, you, you know, you're, you're limited to your resources and now your resources are like a hundred tracks. Yeah, so. exactly. And it's good. <laughs> yeah. It's good. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's a new era. Um, and, uh, looking forward to the future. Anyway, I will yeah, let man. you go, dude. Um, okay. And, uh, yeah. We'll speak Good to you again you. soon. Yeah, you too, yeah, buddy. Hopefully we get to play some shows together sometime. Hell yes. I can't wait for that. Yeah, man. Me too. Looking All forward right. to it. Yeah, man. Um, have a good uh, Labor Day, I guess. Oh, uh, yeah. It's it almost is. Labor Day. Yeah. We don't gonna, do that over here, but... You don't do that, I, but you got I, plenty I, of holidays. No that's lack right. of holiday. Every day is a holiday. Oh, right. Every day is a holiday. When you're broke. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Word. All right. We'll talk to you later, bud. Thanks again. All right. Later, man. And that's it for the Intruder Green podcast. I want to thank Adam again for being on it. You can hit me up on all the socials at Intruder Green or go to intrudergreen.com for all sorts of cool stuff. The Intruder Green call in line is plus 1608 535 9608. Patreon.com slash Intruder Green if you want to become a producer of the podcast. Yeah, Intruder Green, not Intruder Green. <laughs> Uh, the Intruder Green Podcast is produced by Colin Bennett, management by Anka Kramer, hair and makeup by Genevieve Smith, set design by Dylan Raymer, catering Matthew Hendershot, Lilas, Greek Lights, Rahway, New Jersey. Our theme song is Particles by Pipe Rose. You know with Hitler, the more I learn about that guy, the more I don't care for him. <laughs>